Hi, welcome to Task Pigeon. In this tutorial, we're going to show you everything you need to know about Task Pigeon in order to get started. Task Pigeon supports a variety of ways to view and display your tasks. Currently, you are looking at the Task Tile view. Task Pigeon also supports the ability to view your tasks using the List view, as well as using Kanban boards. I'm going to switch back to the Task Tile view for now. On the left hand side, we see that we have a number of menu options. At the moment, we are on the Group Task Dashboard. This shows tasks assigned to you, as well as every single member of your team. If we filter to My Tasks, you will now only see the tasks that you are personally assigned to. Moving to In Progress shows the tasks that you or members of your team have marked as in progress. This is also denoted by this symbol here. Due Soon shows those tasks that are marked as ASAP or have their due date within the next 24 hours. And you can also see this via the flame icon. Moving to the completed task dashboard shows the tasks that you or members of your team have marked as complete. Task Pigeon also has a marketplace offering where you can outsource tasks to our pre-vetted freelancers to help take the workload off you or your team. And the final option here is the ability to create a new task. You can reorder any of these left-hand menu items. I'm going to go back to the group task dashboard for now. In addition to this left-hand filter, Task Pigeon also supports the ability to assign tasks to a specific category. You can see each of our categories listed here, as well as on the dashboard itself. For example, if we filter to Sales, we will now only see the tasks that are assigned to the Sales category. Within the Sales category, we also have two subcategories, Leads and Opportunities. If I click on Leads, I will now filter to see tasks that are assigned to that subcategory. I'll jump back to Sales for now. The category filtering holds true for each of the other left-hand menu items. For example, if I go to My Tasks, I'll now see only tasks that are assigned to me within the Sales category. In this case, I am still assigned to all six of them. The same thing holds true for filtering to In Progress, Due Soon, of which there is only one, and Completed, where we haven't actually marked any tasks as complete within this category. We can, however, see that there's one within the Marketing category, so we could click Marketing to see that. I'll go back to the Group Task Dashboard and back to our All Filter to see everything again. Before I move on from Categories, there's one last feature I'd like to discuss with you. If I scroll down here, you'll see that some of the categories have a padlock icon. What's it, what this means is, is that these categories have been marked as private. As a result, only the users associated with that category will be able to see the task within it. If I hit the edit icon here, you'll see that this category is restricted to myself, logged in as this user here, Hudson Hunter. As a result, if Ashley, George or Ali logged into their account, they would not see this category nor any of the tasks within it. That's why I've called it My Private Tasks. As an example, I've got a task here to complete the company tax return as well as my personal to-do list for the week. These are not tasks that I want other people to be able to see. If I use this other category here as an example and click the edit icon again, you'll see that both Hudson and Ashley have visibility of this category. George and Ali would however not be able to see this category nor any of the tasks within it. I'll jump back to the all category again. I'll now show you what an example of a task looks like in Task Pigeon. For example, let's open this task here, Sales and Expenditure Forecast Requirements. In this instance, we can see that it is a checklist based task. It was created by the user who I'm logged in as, which is Hudson Hunter, and was also assigned to Hudson himself as well as his colleague Ashley. As a checklist based task, you can mark each item off independently of one another. If you need to edit the task, you can hit the edit button. This will allow you to add additional checklist items, change the heading, add attachments, reassign the task, or add it to a different category. I'll jump out of that and open a text based task. <clears throat> Text-based tasks have a description rather than checklist items. These can be as short or as long as you like. In this instance, we can see that it's pretty short. Again, the task was created by Hudson Hunter and was also assigned to Hudson and Ashley. Here we can see that a comment has been left by Hudson. When a comment is left on a task, an email notification is sent to each user assigned to that task. They can view the comment directly from the inbox and then choose to log in to the app to reply or simply hit reply to the email itself. The comment will then sync onto your Task Pigeon account. I'm now going to show you how to create a new task in Task Pigeon. You do this by clicking the plus new task button. 
From there you'll see you have the ability to create a general or text-based task as well as a checklist task. I'll start with the general task for now. Here you want to enter the task heading. For example, I'll put forward the sales proposal to management for a review and then you have the ability to add more details below. You can add headings and subheadings as well as add uh, numbered lists or dot point lists, embed images or code. You can also format your text as you please. For now, I'll leave this as blank. We then have the ability to attach files from your computer, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive or Box, as well as the ability to set a deadline. For example, we have a couple of quick select options such as today, ASAP or ongoing, as well as the ability to select a custom date and time. You can then mark that task as high, medium or low priority or leave it blank. You can see here, for example, on the task in the background that it is marked as high priority given the red symbol. This one here with the yellow is marked as medium priority. We might mark this as low priority to show you what it looks like. We then have the ability to create reoccurring tasks. Reoccurring tasks allow you to create a task on a schedule of your own choosing. For example, if we left this marked as like, like this, this task would be recreated every one day at 9am. You can also select weeks, and if you need fortnight, just change it from every one week to every two weeks, as well as monthly or yearly. I'm not going to create this as a reoccurring task for now, so unmark this checkbox. As you may recall earlier in the video, we have the ability to create a private category. If you want to create a task that is also private, but don't need the whole category to be private, you can do that here. Marking a task as private means that only the people assigned to that task will be able to see it. Again, I won't select that for now. We then need to choose our category. So let's say, for example, um, we want to put this in, well, it could be management or it could be sales because it's a sales proposal. We'll put management. And then we need to assign it to one or more members of our team. We'll choose Hudson and George. If you hit create, the task will now be created and George, as being assigned to the task, will receive an email notification. You can see that this task has popped up here and has been marked as being in low priority. If we go to new task again and fl flick over to the checklist item, you can create a checklist task exactly the same way. The only difference is that you now add individual checklist items. If five isn't enough, don't worry, you can just hit the add new item button to add additional line items to your checklist. Again, you have the ability to mark it as reoccurring and as private, set priorities, deadlines, etc. I'll hit cancel for now. Finally, I'm just going to flick over to the list view to explain some other features and functionality that you might enjoy. The list view is great for getting a quick idea and understanding of the activity on a task. Here we can very easily see what has already been marked as in progress and what is due soon. We can also mark tasks as complete directly from this view. In addition, we have the ability to sort your tasks by a number of different ways. At the moment, we're sorting by the date created. You could also sort by deadline due soon, uh, sorry, deadline due first, due last, category, or last update. Let's say we'll sort by deadline due first. We can now see all of the tasks that have the closest deadline being ASAP, followed by the rest in date order. I'll flick over to the Kanban board view now to show you some other functionality. Kanban boards allow you to get uh, a visual representation of your task and easily create an environment where you can drag and drop tasks from one category to another. You can scroll along to see all of the boards that are, you have created. If you don't need a particular board, you can simply hit the delete icon. This doesn't delete the tasks or the category, it simply removes that board from your view. You can also reorder these cat tasks in any order that you please, as well as drag and drop between categories to reassign them. For example, we've just updated that task from our management to our human resources category. I'll switch back to the task tile view to finish off this video. So far in this video, we've covered the left hand menu and how you can easily filter tasks to see what is assigned to you or members of your team, as well as those that have marked it in progress, due soon or complete. We've explained our category functionality and the ability to create subcategories that are nested under them. We've also looked at the ability to create private categories which restrict who can view the tasks within that category. After that, we looked at tasks in particular. We looked at tasks that are created to be checklist based items as well as tasks that use our rich text editor to 
create a detailed description of what needs to be completed. In addition to that, we have touched on the ability to view these tasks in the tile view, the list view, and using Kanban boards. There's lots of other functionality you can explore in Task Pigeon, so I encourage you to look around and see what it can bring to you and your team. Thanks for watching.